Let's talk about custom functions, but you actually might not need custom functions because we also have expressions. So if you come in here and you go into your set from variable pop-up menu, you can see that you've got this code expression. And an expression is just a combination of values, variables, and operators, which can be evaluated to produce a single value. In short, you can think about them as just a snippet of code. Okay, so you've got custom functions and expressions. So when should you use each of these? We need to think about two things, reusability and complexity. Regarding reusability, code expressions can't be reused. Well, you can copy and paste them, but you can't reference one code expression in multiple places. So if you're gonna use the code multiple times, make it a function. Regarding complexity, if the code you need is more than a single expression, you need a function because expressions are just one expression. Okay, so let's look at how to create custom functions and look at a practical example. So let's come up here and add a function. Now, the idea of a function is that you're gonna take some data in, do some transformation, and then send out some data. And when you're creating custom functions, there are four steps. Naming the function, defining the arguments, setting the return type, and then coding it. Okay, so let's name our function first. And when you're naming functions, follow these two rules. You wanna be descriptive and clear. So first descriptive, the name of your function should be what the function does. And it's often good to use noun verb pairs. So instead of data, it would be fetch data. Or instead of settings, it would be update settings. That way you know exactly what it does. So be descriptive. Second, be clear. Avoid abbreviations and generic terms. So don't abbreviate things like calc AMT, use calculate amount. And a generic name would be something like do work or process data. Instead, you would wanna say what work you're doing or how you're processing the data. And if you're having trouble, it might mean that your function is doing too much and you should refactor it into multiple functions. Okay, so let's name ours. We're gonna write a function that converts Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we can just call this convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Great. Next up, arguments. Sometimes you also hear them called parameters. Those two terms are used interchangeably these days. And your arguments are the things that are being passed into your function. So you wanna be descriptive and clear, just like the function name. So let's add an argument. Let's give it a name. We're gonna call this Celsius temper. Next, let's set the type. Now, if you're coming from a weakly typed language like JavaScript, where you don't have to declare variable types, types restrict the value to only one type of data. And you can see all of those types here. It's a way to make your code run safer with fewer errors. So we need a number and we've got two numbers available to us here, an integer, that's without any decimal place, or a double with, and that's what we want. Next, we have the option to say whether this is a list. And the list is just a collection of values of whatever type you had. So if I had a function where I wanted to pass in multiple Celsius temperatures, then I could click list. But I'm only passing in one, so we're gonna turn that off. Next, we have the option for setting whether this argument is nullable. Now we discussed nullability in our first video on introduction to custom code. So I'm not gonna go into depth here, but as a general guideline, it's good to have your arguments be nullable, but your return types not. So we're gonna leave that on. Now, if you noticed when we were writing the function name and the arguments, that these are automatically added into this function definition. So you don't have to put those in manually and don't try to change them up here. But that's not true of the return value. We have to set that ourselves. So finally, let's set our return value. And here we just have to set the type and the type is a double and we don't want nullable. Okay, great. Now we're ready to go to the fourth step, which is actually writing the code. But let's use Code Copilot for this. And we're ready to use it now because when you're asking our AI code assistant to write the code for us, it's gonna use a description of the function here, but also the function name, the name of the arguments and their types and the return value type. So make sure you have those filled out before you run Code Copilot. Okay, so we want it to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Great. All right, that looks good. So let's copy our function into our code block. Okay, so let's just walk through this so we understand what's going on. Here is our function name. Right in front of our function name, we have the type of data that this function will return. That's what we set right here. And of course, that's what needs to be returned here after our return keyword. Next, we have our arguments that will be passed into our function right here. 
The name of our argument is Celsius temperature, and the type of it is a double. And we have this question mark right here, which indicates that this is a nullable double. That is, the type of data of this can either be a double or null. Okay, great. So the first thing is, is we do a null check. So we're checking if the value that got passed in here is null. And if it is, if this statement is true, then we will jump into this block and return 0.0, .0 because no value was actually passed in. If that's false, then we're gonna go down here to our return statement where we're actually doing all of the logic. And here, we're just doing the basic conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So whatever was passed in times nine divided by five plus 32. Sweet, so that looks good. Now let's test our function. So we come over here to test and let's just put in a value. So let's put in one and run it, awesome. All right, lastly, let's bind this in our UI. Great, let's save our function and check it for errors. Awesome, now let's bind this in the UI. So let's come over to our builder and we've just got a text field to put in our value and then some text to display it. So let's come into our text, let's open this up. Here are our custom functions, so let's open it up and there we've got our function. Now in here, you can see that we got a couple of options here. You can go in and edit your function if you wanna make changes, but here is our arguments that we set up. So we want this to be a dynamic value. We don't wanna hard code a temperature in there. So it's going to come from a widget state that is our text field. And you've got some number formatting options because it is a double, but we're just gonna take the default and then just confirm that. Lastly, let's come over to our text field here and scroll to the bottom. And we want the page to update on the change of this because if we didn't have this on, the function would run. And so we would have the converted value, but that value wouldn't be repainted on the screen. So we need to do that. So we can just set the, let's say 200 milliseconds. Okay, great, let's test this out. All right, so let's put in maybe 30 degrees or 100. Beautiful. And that's how to use custom functions in Flutterflow.